Hello and welcome to another episode of Luxone Explained. In the last two episodes we had quite a detailed look at the topic of lighting. We started out with the various products, interfaces and technologies. And then we took a closer look at the control and interaction of lighting integrated with Luxone. Today we want to implement everything we talked about in Luxone Config, step by step. But before we get started, do you have any questions or suggestions about lighting technology with Luxone? Then tell us in the comments below. We'll answer all your questions in detail in the next episode. If you are as passionate about automation as we are and want to share your passion with others and implement it in your daily business, then why not find out more about becoming a Luxone installer? But now, let's start with the configuration. The base of our configuration today is our living dining area from the last video. First, we start to commission our RGBW spots and label them clearly. That includes assigning them to the correct room. The tree lighting products are connected to the tree extension using the tree cable. Search, identify and name. Done. We continue with our pendant lights, which are integrated via the dimmer extension. Whenever you're integrating lighting via the dimmer extension, you'll have to work carefully. A dimmer extension has four dimming channels. Here, it's important to know which output on the dimmer extension in the distribution board each lighting circuit is wired back to. As in our previous video in this series, you would have already ensured the suitability of any light that you're using, in terms of the project requirements and dimming capability. It's very important to set the dimming type according to the specification of the lights that you are installing. Please make sure that the lights can actually be dimmed smoothly before you install them. Your customer will not be happy with flickering lighting or light that can only be dimmed halfway. If you don't do this, you would likely end up having to invest a lot of time and money to iron out this planning error. As soon as all outputs are clearly named and their locations are set, we can start with the configuration. We insert the lighting controller function block. The function block enables the control and automation of lighting in a room or an area. Switching, dimming, as well as the adjustment of colored light is supported for various interfaces using this block. We recommend using this block as it does not matter whether the lighting is addressed via DALI, tree or dimming outputs. The block has 8 inputs to control the various lighting scenes and different lighting circuits can be configured via the outputs AQ1 to 8Q18. Let's start with the outputs. I simply drag and drop all outputs in the room onto the function block. By double clicking on the block, the following window opens. The first tab is lighting circuits and here you have the ability to change the name of the output or the type. As you can see, the name of the output has already been populated because I already set this correctly at the beginning. As mentioned before, you can also set the type of output. However, this is usually already set automatically, depending on the actuator type. But let me show you what's available. Switch, dimmer from 0 to 100%, dimmer from 0 to 10 volts, dimmer from 1 to 10 volts, RGB, Lumitech and Smart Actuator. By the way, the Smart Actuator is a special type of actuator that is set by default for various locks on light fixtures or dimmers. Smart Actuators combine the outputs for RGB and warm white to one output for devices with RGBW light. Furthermore, they support variable fading times, which allows for a step-free slow fade of either the brightness or color. This of course makes for the simple configuration of the lighting. Let's jump to the next tab, Moods, where I can now create my defined lighting moods. Up to 89 lighting moods can be created, which can be addressed via the analog input AIS. A total of 8 moods can be addressed via the so-called T5 input. So we create our lighting moods as follows. Ambient light, cooking, Dining, Cozy and TV. The two moods Bright and Off are pre-configured. Bright can be edited individually like any other mood. And by the way, I recommend setting up custom lighting moods in the Lockzone app together with your customers, rather than just you doing it in config. You can adjust the order of the lighting moods using the two arrow keys or in the Lockzone app. In the column Input, you'll see which input is assigned to which lighting mood. This will become much more clear in just a moment. Via the plus checkbox, you can decide whether a mood is skipped when cycling through the moods. This would be useful, for example, for a lighting mood that you want to have permanently stored but won't be using often, like a special Christmas lighting mood. And with the presence input checkbox, the respective mood is mixed in when the input is activated via a presence sensor, for example, as mentioned in the last video. So far so good! Now let's take a look at the automatic tab in a moment. With the mix checkbox, you can influence the mixing behavior mentioned in part 2. If the checkbox is set, the mood is mixed in with the first tab of a T5. We now close the window and connect our inputs to the function block. Let's take a quick moment to remember. The touch in the entrance area is associated with the ambient lighting mood. 
the touch in the kitchen with the cooking mood, etc. So basically now, our lighting control is fully configured. The only thing that's left to do is setting the lighting moods to your customer specifications right in the LockZone app. But wait a minute, we forgot one very important aspect. Right, automation. The lighting mood should switch on automatically when it is needed. The prerequisite is, of course, precise presence detection. I've already gone into detail on this earlier. I simply connect the output AQPR of the presence block with the P input of the lighting controller block. With a double click, I get back to the previous window and switch to the automatic tab. Now I can select which lighting mode will be activated through presence detection when a certain operating mode is active. In my case, the operating mode is any. The mode selected on motion, ambient light, and the action is only use if previously all off. Last but not least, I connect the brightness value of the presence sensor to input AIB because I want automatic lighting only when below a certain threshold value. You can either change the threshold value in the properties of the device or use expert mode in the LockZone app. This was an overview of basic lighting configuration. The lighting controller function block has a whole range of other features. If you have any questions, we'll be happy to answer them in our special Q&A episode. So post them in the comments. And if you're still not working with home and building automation from LockZone, then now is the time to change that. I've linked all the info in the video description. Thanks for tuning in. And if you enjoyed our video series on lighting, we always appreciate a thumbs up. And to make sure you don't miss another video, go and subscribe to our YouTube channel. See you next time.